CES is one of the largest tech exhibitions in the world, where over 130,000 participants and nearly 4,000 companies and startups from 150 countries are rushing to show what the technologies of the future look like. But the main thing this year isn't the number of gadgets. The exhibition clearly shows a trend. Artificial intelligence has stopped being just a promise. It no longer lives only in presentations in the cloud. It has moved into robots, cars, factories, and devices that are starting to provide real benefit right now. Now, what kind of progress has AI made and what is the situation with robots for our daily needs? Let's figure it out right now! The main bombshell of the exhibition was the appearance of Boston Dynamics with its new electric robot, Atlas. Its appearance here is no coincidence. After decades of shocking stunts, the company made an incredible statement. Atlas is going to work at the factory. Yes, the company that grew out of the MIT scientific environment back in the 90s spent years making machines that seemed impossible, from military prototypes to legendary androids. But now, it is rapidly becoming the first company to actually make money on non industrial robots. Although Boston Dynamics does not officially share figures, it modestly states that its robots Spot and Stretch are already working for clients by the thousands. This is confirmed by the company's partners. For example, DHL is publicly talking about plans for 1,000 plus robots as part of its automation growth. And now it's Atlas's turn. The updated fully electric robot features joints that can rotate 360 degrees, can work on a single battery charge for about four hours, and can change it independently. The robot has an impressive height of 199 centimeters and weighs 90 kilograms. The body is made of aluminum and titanium. Atlas lifts up to 50 kilograms. Its hands have 56 degrees of freedom, a span of up to 2.3 meters, and are capable of adapting their grip to the shape of an object. Tactile sensors are installed in the hands, allowing for precise force control, from heavy parts to fragile objects. The robots will be sent to work at Hyundai Auto Plants. First, the automaker will launch a production line for the robots, and then involve them in the work itself. The first tasks will be simpler. In them, Atlas must prove that it is reliable and safe. These will be repetitive movements, carrying loads, the most boring jobs where people quickly burn out. Later, the tasks will become more complex. The plans are not theoretical. Everything is serious. Hyundai plans to reach a production volume of about 30,000 Atlas units per year by 2028, and that is already an industrial scale. What does this mean? Has Boston Dynamics really managed to overcome all the industry's limitations and make Atlas truly smart, autonomous, and and useful? We won't guess, but it's no coincidence the company released its latest videos, not with crazy stunts, but with explanations of how the robot learns and what it's capable of. For rapid progress, the Bostonians teamed up with another strong team, the Toyota Research Institute. These guys have long been involved in accelerating robot learning and have achieved significant success. For example, Atlas was trained using large behavior models, systems that allow the robot not just to perform individual movements, but to combine walking, gripping objects, and spatial orientation into one solid skill. It cannot be ruled out that the robot's brains and abilities will still be refined while production is being set up. It's a pity the company doesn't disclose the price of the robot. That's what's really interesting. But despite the triumph of Atlas, CES 2026 clearly showed that China is ruling the production of humanoid robots today. 21 out of 38 stands with androids at the exhibition were occupied by companies from the Middle Kingdom. And these are not just demonstration models. For example, Agibot from Shanghai stood out due to its production volumes. The company stated that it shipped its 5,000th humanoid robot in December 2025. This figure is significantly ahead of competitors in the US market today. For comparison, it is believed that Tesla has only released a few hundred Optimus robots so far. Meanwhile, UB Tech Robotics plans to reach a volume of 5,000 units in 2026 and 10,000 units in 2027. Against the rest of the market, these are huge numbers and they are putting pressure on Western developers. And it's not just them. It's not just about volumes, but also about price. Unitree Robotics sells its G1 humanoid robot for $13,500. Its more expensive H1 model costs about $90,000. In contrast, many Western robots cost much more and are supplied in small batches. Moving on, what if the most mass-produced robots in the world won't be humanoids from China or even the Tesla bot, but an iPhone charger? At CES 2026, they showed a device that at first looks as boring as possible, a desktop MagSafe stand. 
a couple of ports, just a charger, but only until the moment you put your iPhone on it. The screen turns on, the AI assistant starts, and the stand itself begins to turn toward you as if it had grown a head. This is Deskmate from the company Yuna. Formally, it is not a robot. It has no screen of its own, no AI, and no brain, because all of that is already in your pocket. It is the iPhone that turns a simple charger into a physical AI assistant. The phone remains the brain, voice, and eyes, and the stand becomes the body. It moves, keeps the smartphone in the frame, and creates a sense of presence. How do you like this solution? NVIDIA's presentation at CES attracted huge interest and attention. Jensen Huang took the stage with a simple statement. The next big wave isn't chatbots or image generation. It's physical AI, AI that learns in simulation, on synthetic data, and then enters the real world in the form of machines. But there is a catch. Competition around AI is growing, and NVIDIA is no longer selling just chips. At CES, it is selling the idea that physical AI can be made faster, cheaper, and safer if you build everything end-to-end -end according to their rules. But this is exactly where the trick lies. While the market wants freedom and compatibility, NVIDIA offers an ecosystem where it holds all the key bricks. First, NVIDIA showed Cosmos, a basic world model that simulates environments obeying the laws of physics. The logic is simple. If robots and autonomous machines are to act in the real world, they need to be taught in an almost real world, millions of times, cheaply and without risk. This is the bet on learning through simulation and synthetic data, rather than through endless, expensive tests in reality. Second, the key block is humanoids. NVIDIA says directly, robots should not learn individual tricks, but whole skills that can be transferred between platforms. For this, they are promoting their stack for training and evaluation in simulation, Isaac Lab and Isaac Lab Arena. In these, robots are trained in a virtual world and progress is checked not by impressive videos, but by clear and measurable indicators what the robot can do, how stable it is, and whether it has improved over time. Third, to prevent this whole process from falling apart, NVIDIA adds the Osmo system, a kind of dispatcher that links training, simulations, data, and calculations into one manageable process. Simply put, NVIDIA is building a factory where robots are taught systematically for stable work, not for camera tricks. But that's not all. NVIDIA also showed physical AI at the edge. Because it's not enough for a robot to be smart in a data center, it needs to make decisions on the spot with minimal latency. Therefore, NVIDIA is specifically strengthening the Jetson line as a base for robots and autonomous devices that need a computer inside the body, not somewhere in the cloud. The company is also focusing on autonomous driving. Specifically, NVIDIA announced Alpa Mayo, a model for autonomous driving and the tools around it. This is the fourth novelty. The meaning is the same as with robots, to close the long tail of rare situations by training and checking systems on a large scale. And fifth, the infrastructure on which all this should fly. It was stated at CES that the next generation platform, Vera Rubin, is already in full-scale production. Meaning NVIDIA is pushing not only with software and models, but also with the hardware that will feed this physical AI with calculations. In simple terms, NVIDIA stated at CES, we are building the factory of physical AI, and the company plans to cover all its needs with its own products. But the question is, will the whole industry want to depend on NVIDIA? Uber made an unexpected release. It decided to enter the robo-taxi market and immediately played its trump cards. Its concept has already been called the most luxurious robo-taxi to date. The car was developed jointly with luxury electric car manufacturer Lucid Motors and Neuro, a company involved in self-driving technology. It is equipped with cameras, sensors, and radars providing a 360-degree circular view. There is also a low-profile halo on the roof with integrated LEDs that will display passengers' initials to help them find the car and track the trip status. Inside, everything can be personalized, from climate control and heated seats to music, and real-time visual effects will show you exactly what the car sees on the road and what route it plans to take. The new RoboTaxi is not just a concept, it is already undergoing autonomous road tests that began last month in San Francisco, and that is already a claim for a soon-to-be road release. How do you think, will Uber beat Elon Musk? We have been waiting for this for decades, and finally, LG stated that it is ready to do it. To release a real, full-fledged, functional home robot, just like from the sweetest dream. LG CLOID performs real housework, folds laundry, takes food out of the refrigerator and dishes out of the dishwasher, helps in the kitchen, and coordinates the operation of household appliances. To journalists admitted to the first demonstrations, the Korean tech giant showed not just a robot, but the idea of a future home, where 
where appliances cease to be a set of individual devices. Cloyd works within the LG ThinQ ecosystem and acts as an intermediary between the refrigerator, oven, washing machine, and the person. That is, it does not try to replace the appliances. Instead, it gathers the home into a single organism. Cloyd looks like a compact humanoid on a wheeled base, and this is no accident. LG deliberately abandoned walking legs. Wheels provide stability, safety, and increase energy efficiency. In addition, the low center of gravity reduces the risk of tipping over, which is especially important in a house with children or animals. The robot has two manipulators, and each arm has seven degrees of freedom. Additionally, there are five independent fingers in the palm, which allow it to work carefully with dishes, clothes, and food. The robot's torso can tilt, changing height. Thanks to this, Cloyd is able to pick up objects from knee level and higher without looking threatening or clumsy. The robot's head is not just a face, but the center of the home's intelligence. It contains cameras, sensors, speakers, a display, and a chipset on which the generative AI runs. Cloyd understands voice, reacts to speech, orients itself in space, and gradually learns the family's daily routine. LG is positioning the robot not as a concept, but as a future product. But will the company be able to bring the matter to commercial release? It's worth remembering that Samsung didn't succeed with this trick, although the company also tried. Remember the butler robot? It also had an optimized design and could perform many tasks around the house, but it never became a product. True, then the company still released a home robot, Bali, but a completely different one. Yes, unusual ideas at the exhibition poured out as if from a cornucopia. For instance, the company Lollipop Star presented a candy that plays music for you while you eat it. How is this even possible? It's all thanks to the use of bone induction technology. Simply put, it works like this. Sound turns into vibration, which is transmitted through the skull bone to the inner ear. In this way, the brain hears the sound. And so the candy allows you to hear songs. For example, tracks by Ice Spice and Akon upon contact of the candy with the palate. This is not a concept, but a real product, and it will go on sale very soon at a price of $8.99 a piece. There was always a lot of the unexpected at CES. Thus, at the stand of the Swiss startup AI Tales, they showed a smart station for cats. But this is not just a bowl with Wi-Fi. This AI gadget tries daily to understand if your cat is healthy. After all, pets like babies cannot say where it hurts or what is bothering them. And by the time the symptoms become obvious, things may have already gone quite far. The station is equipped with a camera and sensors. When a pet approaches the bowl, the system analyzes several parameters at once. How much it eats and drinks, body temperature, and even facial expression. Tiny changes in mimicry and behavior, the very signals a person usually misses, the AI records and compares with the norm. To show how it works, the developers at the stand offered an unusual experiment. Visitors chose and put on cat masks and then approached the feeder. After a couple of seconds, the system reported that everything was fine or or raised an alarm. AI Tales creator Angelica Dirigi says the idea was born from a personal tragedy. Her own cat unexpectedly became seriously ill. After that, the team, together with Swiss researchers, began collecting data so that AI could become something like a smartwatch for pets. And yes, a version for dogs will appear in the future. It seems to be a truly useful gadget, but not a cheap one. You will have to pay $499 for the station and lay out another $421 for the application. Another trend at CES is wearable displays. Why is this relevant? Imagine you are playing on a portable console. A device as small and light as the Ray Neo Air 4 Pro from TCL will help you immerse yourself in game worlds as if you were in front of a huge TV or even sitting in a movie theater. But until now, such glasses had a serious downside, the picture. There's a big screen, but no depth or contrast. And TCL stated at the exhibition that it has solved this problem. Rainio Air 4 are the first glasses where the image stops being flat. Micro OLED, brightness up to 1200 nits. Real contrast. Here, light and shadow begin to work as intended, especially in games and movies. Yes, the resolution is still 1080p. This is a general ceiling for the industry. But HDR makes the picture visually more voluminous and livelier than most competitors. And at the same time, Rainio Air 4 Pro costs about $299, significantly cheaper than many analogs from Xreal and but TCL looks further. At the exhibition, the company also showed a concept of autonomous AR glasses, Rainio X3 Pro with an integrated ESIM, that is, glasses that can work without a smartphone, be always online, and launch applications independently. But the boldest gadget at CES 2026 was 
a smartphone. But don't be quick to be disappointed. This model will be able to surprise you. Look at the new product from Honor with a retractable robotic camera. Yes, this is the most unconventional design we've seen in a long time. A full-fledged robotic gimbal somewhat resembling DJI Osmo cameras is hidden in the phone's body. When folded, it neatly retracts inside and the smartphone looks almost like a regular device, except for a particularly large camera module. But at the right moment, the camera literally comes to life, extending outward and changing position. The phone is clearly designed for content creators, those who shoot video, stream, record blogs, and are tired of carrying stabilizers and holders. The robot phone seems to say, why a separate gadget if the camera can be part of the smartphone itself? So far, little is known about the technical characteristics. They promise to reveal them later. The gadget has already aroused great interest, but the question is, will you buy it or not? Honestly? It seems a worthy successor to the iconic Tamagotchi from the 90s has finally been found. And yes, it lives not only on the screen, it grows in the real world. If in 1996, Tamagotchis were the main childhood dream, today at CES 2026 in Las Vegas, Suicar appeared, a pocket pet with artificial intelligence that physically increases in size as you interact with it. Suicar starts life as an egg with ears, but when you take it in your hands and tap on its head, it cracks and sleepy eyes appear. The pet hatches. At the exhibition, this process was accelerated, but in real life, incubation can last up to two days. Then comes the baby stage, and it grows with your constant attention. Next is the teenage period, which can stretch for a month. Interestingly, can it be skipped in the settings? And then adult life. And with each stage, Suikar becomes bigger. As with the classic Tamagotchi, different actions are required from you at each stage. Care, training, reactions, and so on. When the RoboPed grows up, it no longer requires so much attention, but offers you more complex and interesting games. And yes, like in the Tamagotchi from the 90s, if you ignore the pet, it can die. The launch of Suiker is planned via Kickstarter later this year, and the price will be $150. Looks more interesting than the RoboCats from Elephant Robotics, agree? For millions of Americans, Alexa is a kid kitchen timer, music in the evenings, and lights that go out on command. It is background technology that everyone is used to, but now, it is changed. At CES 2026, Amazon announced a modest but fundamental step. Now, Alexa has gone beyond the speaker and works in the browser, not as a setting for Echo, but as a full-fledged AI assistant, with dialogue, planning, calendars, shopping lists, and smart home management. And it works even when there is no speaker or phone nearby. In other words, Alexa used to live in a device now she lives everywhere. At CES 2026, it became clear. Even surveillance cameras no longer have to look boring. Meet OwlGuard from Lockley, a camera in the shape of a small owl that proves safety can be friendly. Behind the cute design lies a serious idea. OwlGuard is an outdoor camera with 2K resolution, color night vision, and a small screen with device status. And most importantly, it can work even when everything goes wrong. If Wi-Fi or internet disappears, or if someone tries to jam the signal, the camera will not go blind. It will continue to detect motion and record video autonomously. This is a rarity for wireless cameras and an important step for real home security. Another unexpected feature is modularity. AlGuard can be supplemented with a solar panel, a privacy shutter, a glare visor, a silicone case, and even a magnifying glass. The owl literally gets a monocle. It's funny, but behind this is an important trend. Security systems are becoming customizable for a specific house and scenario. This miracle will be released in the second quarter of 2026 and that's far from everything. See the continuation of the review of new products from the world of robots and AI in the next video.